Here we're going to look at the notion of an indexing set and intersections and unions over indexed sets. So let's look at the definition. So we want to start with I, where that is any set, and I really mean any set here. There are some usually standard choices for indexing sets, but you can really take it to be arbitrary. But the one rule that you need is that for all little i in capital I, we can produce some set A sub i. And then we want to define the union over all of these sets and the intersection over all of these sets. So the union over the AI as I runs from this whole indexing set capital I. So that's going to be everything X that satisfies this rule. So X is in AJ for at least one J and I. So you can think of this at for at least one statement as being like an or statement. And then next, the intersection of the AI over this indexing set is all X that satisfy this rule. So X is in AJ for all J and I. So here you can think about this for all as like an and statement if you want to relate this back to the intersection and the union of just two sets. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. So let's start with this fairly simple one. So our indexing set is just a set of three elements, one, two, and three. And for each of these elements, one, two, and three, we can define a set. So we've got A1, that's the set containing zero, one, two, three, four, five. A2 is the set containing negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. And then A3 is the set containing minus four, minus two, zero, two, four. So let's go ahead and calculate the intersection and the union over these indexed sets. Maybe we'll start with the union. So the union over I and I of AI, well, First of all, if we only have a finite number of elements from our indexing set, it's usually standard not to write it like this, but we would write it in the following way. So this would be the union as i goes from one to three of ai. So it's the same kind of idea though. This is like maybe more in line with what you would see in like a calculus two type class when you're doing series. And so notice that here we're looking for all of the numbers that are in at least one of these sets. So let's see what we've got. So negative four is gonna be in A3, so that's in at least one of them. Negative three is in A2, so that's in at least one of them. Uh, negative two is in a couple of them. Negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's what we end up with. Good. Now let's look at the intersection. So the intersection over all i in this indexing set of ai. So again, since we've got a fairly small finite indexing set, we would generally write this as the intersection from i going from one to three of ai. So here we wanna look for all of the numbers that are simultaneously in all of these sets. But notice there are only two such numbers. There's zero and there is two. So here we have this is zero and two. Okay, good. So now let's move on to this next example. So here we've got an infinite indexing set. And so we are indexed by the natural numbers. So one, two, three, so on and so forth. And we're taking AI to be the set containing minus I, zero and I. So let's maybe flush out some examples of this real quick. So notice that A1 is gonna be the set containing minus one, zero, one. A2 is going to be the set containing minus 2, 0, 2, and now we can see the pattern. All right, so let's do the union and the intersection, just like we did in this previous example. So the union over all i in i, and if you really wanted to, you could actually replace this i in i with i in the natural numbers, since we know the exact shape of this indexing set. So of a sub i, well, when we're indexing over the natural numbers, there's actually a kind of standard way of doing this, and that would be in line with this, but thinking about it like an infinite union. So here we've got the union as i goes from one to infinity of a sub i. Again, in line with something from series in a calculus two type class. All right, but notice that if we union over all of these sets, we will produce all of the integers. So that means here we've got this is all integers. 
Now, technically, you would want to maybe prove this with double containment, but we're not going to do that just yet. That's further along in this course. Okay, so now next, let's go ahead and look at the intersection over all i in the indexing set. Or if we wanted to, we could write all i in the natural numbers of a sub i. So again, we could write that as the intersection as i goes from 1 to infinity of a sub i. But now we want to look for a shared element from all of these sets. But there's only one shared element from these sets, and that is the number 0. So here we get the singleton zero if we take this intersection. Okay, so let's get rid of this and we'll look at a couple more examples. For our last example, we're gonna look at indexed subsets of the plane. So our indexing set will be the interval minus one to one. So in the last two examples, we had either a finite indexing set or a countably infinite in indexing set. And here we've got an uncountably infinite indexing set. And so I just wanted to do this example so that everyone could see that this kind of setup was possible as well. Okay, so our indexing set, like I said, is the interval minus one to one. And then for each i on this interval, we'll define the set ai to be the singleton i crossed with the interval zero, one. And that's going to be a subset of R2. Let's maybe write down what this means like in terms of ordered pairs so we can have an idea of what subset of R2 this is. So notice this is going to be the subset defined by ordered pairs. The x entry or the first entry is always i. So that depends on where we are in the indexing set. And then the second entry is a variable y, and y is going to run between 0 and 1, like that. So that's an alternative way of writing this like singleton i cross 0, 1. Okay, so let's maybe look at some examples of this. So let's maybe put our coordinate plane here. So this is like the x-axis and this is like the y-axis. Let's maybe first look at the set a sub minus 1. So a sub minus 1, the x-coordinate will all be, always be minus 1. And then the y-coordinate can go between 0 and 1. So a sub minus 1, let's say minus 1 is over here. Let's say this is 1. a sub minus 1 will be that vertical line segment. And then similarly, if we put minus half here, we've got a line segment like that. That's going to be a sub minus half. So a sub 0 will be this one right here. So I, I see my 1 just like went up a little bit. So this would be a sub 0. Notice that like a sub quarter would be like that line right there. And then finally, a sub 1 would be this line segment right here. OK. But you know, we don't have a finite or a countable number of line segments even. We have an uncountable number of line segments. So that means if we were to union all of these together, we would get some sort of rectangle. So let's maybe draw that in a different color. So notice the boundary of the rectangle on this side will be a sub minus 1. On this side, it'll be a sub 1. Then we'll have something like this. So let's shade this orange. We can point out that this shaded orange bit is the union over all i and i of a sub i. But now we could write that as the cross product of two intervals, and that's going to be the cross product of minus 1 to 1 with 0 to 1. So that gives us this closed rectangle in the plane. And then also I want to notice that if we take the intersection over all i of a i, we very clearly get the empty set. And that's because none of these overlap at all. Notice a sub minus 1 does not overlap with a sub 1. a sub minus 1 doesn't overlap with a sub half. So in fact, since we have non-intersection in any two pairs, well, then we clearly have non-intersection as we take them all as a whole. So we get the empty set for this intersection. And that's a good place to stop.